it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today we are here to start third week vlog of Gothtober. I'm going to keep this introduction short because I'm kneeling in front of my bookcase and it's not the most comfortable setting I've chosen to film in ever but I just wanted to kick this off by saying today I'm not going to do much filming I'm going to go and meet up with a friend now we're going to eat apple crumble that I baked last week and have some chats but I'm not going to film it but I did want to mention that I'll be starting this as my next creepy read for Gothtober and that is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca and this is a novella collection there's two novellas and one short story in this and they all sound deliciously dark and deliciously creepy and I'll give you check-ins of my thoughts after I finish each short story so that when I wrap it up in my vlog I'm just giving an overall wrap up but you get the in detail stuff because you are here and you are watching this vlog and that is what you deserve I'm in love with this cover it's a piece of art and yeah very excited to get into this but I'll see you tomorrow because today is a me day a me day without a camera I just about finished reading We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lange and this is the literary fiction book that I thought was a thriller but it's actually a literary fiction book that follows a big family. If you want a full synopsis check out the vlog before this one because I just read the last 75-ish pages and it was a very interesting ending. I do think I, this is one of those books where I really don't know how I feel about it because there are some things I didn't like about it but then there's some things that I really really did enjoy and overall I think it's a very good and it's a very solid story but in a year's time I don't think I'm going to remember much about this book other than it had a really good big family found family vibe dynamic and I think that's the thing that really stood out for me in this one the big family the complicated family it was all done very very well and I really liked the characters and the character building is just very well portrayed I do think it was kind of easy after the first plot twist to kind of see what the other plot things were going to be and who was the culprit behind some of those plot things I think that became fairly obvious and you kind of knew where this book was going to end there was no question about it and but it was still a very good read. I still really enjoyed my time turning those pages, enjoyed my time getting to that ending. So overall, I just feel a bit conflicted because as I said, I did not love the fact that the disabled character did not get a point of view, but was kind of used to move the plot along and used as a barometer for how the characters were feeling. I don't even know if barometer is the right word for that. But yeah, it was just a bit of a... Mm, I just need more time to think about this one so I think in my wrap up I'm going to have more cohesive ready to go thoughts on my feelings about this book but for now it's kind of churning around in my brain and I need some more time to process and often when I finish a book I'm like this is it this is my rating these are my thoughts it's done finished I know it all but for this book it's kind of like I don't really know what my rating is I don't really know what my thoughts are I'm just working my way through the process so that's kind of where I'm at with that book but that means I finished another book for my gothic mansion proms and that ticks off disability representation we have mentioned before that it doesn't have to be the author themselves who are the representation it can be a character in the book and I even though I didn't love the way the disability representation was done in the book itself it still was the one I read for my disability prompt <laughs> This week has been 110% and I just haven't updated you in a while so we are going to do one massive update and then the rest of the weekend will be the rest of this vlog and there'll be some more clips this weekend because I actually will have time. We Are The Brennans was my travel book so since I'd finished my travel book I started another travel book and that is Beautiful Broken Things by Sarah Barnard. I woke up one day and I was just feeling really sad because it's been a while since I'd read a young adult contemporary book and I was just kind of done with reading adult. I don't know 
you know, my mood. I just felt like it was time to read some young adult books. And so I picked up this one. This is the oldest young adult book on my TBR. So I feel proud that I picked it up. And it's all about friendships. I'm actually only 100 pages from the end already. 100 pages from the end. That's how much reading I've been doing and how much back and forth to work. Travel time. But it's about this group of friends. There's two best friends who are a tight unit. They've always been very close, but then one new person shows up and integrates herself into their friendship. But she has a lot of trauma that she's working through and she's kind of dragging down one of the friendship members with her. And it's about the complications around their friendship surrounding this and surrounding her trauma and how it's kind of eking into other bits of her friendship and their lives. And I do think this is just really, really well written. I've read A Quiet Kind of Thunder by this author and I was just impressed with how she tackled that subject. And this one is quite dark. It's going into childhood abuse. It's going into suicidal thoughts. It's going into a lot of dark places. And as a teenager, that can already be such a difficult ground to work through because you've got all of the insecurities and things that come with growing up in there as well. And I'm just marveling at how it's showing the complexity of this friendship and this dynamic. And when I read the first 50 pages, I was not impressed. It was all about a girl whose goals in life was to get a boyfriend and to do this and lose her virginity. And I was like, this feels so young to me. And I was so surprised because Sarah Barnard didn't seem like that kind of young adult writer. But I'm glad that I stuck with it because she's clearly not and this one has a lot of depth to it so if you start this book and you're wondering what's the point just keep going. Also before I left you I was like I'm starting things have gotten worse since we last spoke but yesterday was the reading sprints and during those reading sprints on my channel I actually finished this collection but I did say I would give you a blow by blow of every story and what I thought of each story so the first one is the titular story of this short story collection it's called things have gotten worse since we last spoke and it's about this woman who makes a connection with someone online and that connection turns very dark and this book was messed up this short story was messed up it had me wondering like what is going on I can't believe people are like like this and would be convinced to do certain things. It was one of those books where you can just see the gradual spiral and in the beginning I was like what am I reading? Am I just reading a short story about an apple peeler? But no, it spirals. It goes dark. And then the second short story is called The Enchantment and this one was heavy on the religious imagery and it was heavy on the like ghostly and heaven scent and devils and angels kind of imagery and I think it did it very well. I think this was actually my least favourite of the short story collection. Not that it was bad, it was just that I didn't feel like it had as much of a conclusion as the other two in the collection did but I still had a very good time and it was the one that had the most breadth to it in terms of time and duration that we spend with the characters and it was interesting to see the character to dynamic shifting in this one. And then the last one was the shortest one and it was called You'll Find It's Like That All Over and I really liked that one. Again, it was one of those ones that really built and kind of spiralled and it was saying something about society and the ways in which we interact with each other, especially relatable to Britishisms and British culture and I thought that was very fascinating. I liked that it didn't have to spiral into the worst of the worst to still feel like a horror book. It still felt horror even though it wasn't too gruesome per se. And so really like this collection all in all. I would urge you to read the author's note. I thought it was just interesting to see the ways in which these short stories link together and having read that I can see that this feels like a wholesome and complete collection in and of itself. I will definitely be reading more Eric LaRocca because that was fantastic and scary and dark and this one fit my LGBTQ plus prompt for Gothtober. Gothic Mansion. In terms of life update, what have I been doing? Writing mentorship work, I've been doing a lot of writing and working on my novel and verse. I hosted my connect group for church for the first time and that was interesting, it was just something I've never done before. It's kind of like a bible study discussion group and I just never let it. And the other thing is just work, lots and lots of work. So for work I'm also reading The Garden of Evening Mists. I read a bit more of this, I did not read much more of this. It is just so much slower in contrast to everything else that I'm reading which is like high fantasy and horror and intense. So that is why this one is going slower for me and I think I'm gonna pause it now. I think I'm gonna stop it here for this month and maybe pick it up next month but I say I'm gonna stop it here, who really knows what will happen next week. And then during those reading sprints because I finished the Eric LaRocca book I needed to start my next one so I started Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Bastureka, Bastureka and this book is seriously messed up. I know I've said that Mexican Gothic is messed up and the Eric LaRocca book was messed up. This is the most messed up of 
all of them. It's set in the future and it's where meat and animals and eating animals, there's a virus so you can't do it anymore, it's killing humans to eat meat, so instead humans have turned to breeding humans and eating them instead. And I've read one quarter of this and I am so disturbed. I am so disturbed. I will not be eating meat at any point during reading this book. This book is definitely the thing that has made me consider veganism more than any documentary I've seen. It's really talking about the power of words and the ways in which language really affects our perception and understanding of things, which is something we all universally know, but the metaphor in this is driving it home all the more. I also just think it's written really compelling in a compelling way, it's written really well, it's not beautiful per se because the subject matter is brutal and gruesome and horrible but it is like kneeling and constant and dark and disturbing and it's doing that very very well and so I'm just absolutely enamoured with this book while actually feeling queasy while I'm reading it. Usually with horror I don't feel too queasy, I don't feel too scared but this one, it's got me it's got me. It kind of reminds me of the Spanish film The Platform, if you've seen that horror film. It's got the platform vibes and commentary but it's a slightly different situation and in a book. So I'll be reading more of that and telling you more of my thoughts. I do you want to choose the next tea? Because we drink tea and read books here on this channel. I don't even know which number I need to get to next. 13? Yes, I need to get to 13. So <laughs> I know this tea. This tea is wild apple and cinnamon. It says a sunlit orchid of warmth and sweet spice from old orchids. Apples come with sweet and spicy cinnamon. Perfect Christmas heaven. And I already know they're correct because I've had this before. So I can already tell you my review. I think the wild apple and cinnamon flavor is great. This is one of the teas, like you often have apple and cinnamon tea and it's heavy on the cinnamon and light on the apple flavouring but I think what Puka do really well here is that it's heavy on the apple and light on the cinnamon if that's the kind of thing you want. So, let the weekend begin. morning I have been really really good I've been I've been so productive I've mailed off things for Hannah some unhaul books I, I I just did all the things I'm so distracted I can't even tell you what I did I meal prepped a massive vegetarian lasagna for the week I have read my book I actually finished my book but we'll get to that and last night I was reading Take a Hint Danny Brown and I read another 50 pages and it's still good but I don't really have much more to update you on that but this arrived it's the owl crate box so if you watched my video i am on a book buying ban you'll know that i cannot buy any books this whole year for a whole year until july next year and actually when i went to the post office i popped it to the works and i saw that what's the book called again you've reached sam by dustin tyre was for five pounds in the works and i had to leg it out of that shop literally i ran because i was so tempted to get that book and that is the most tempted i've been since i started my buying ban but i have one exception where i can buy one book this year and that was the Alcrate edition of grey warren by magnesty butter because it's the last book in the extended series of one of my favorite series of all time which is the raven cycle so this is the extended series i don't even love it as much as the raven cycle mostly i found it average so i have no idea why i am so excited to have the last book in my hands but i really i really am i i forgot that this was coming so i got an alcrate package and i was like i didn't forget gray warren was coming but i forgot it's coming in an alcrate box because usually if i see a box that's alcrate or a lumicrate it means hannah's unhauled something and is sending it to me 
but I opened it and the first thing I saw was this art print and so I just lost it. <laughs> oh, I love the art print so much. It's got Ronan on it. It's got Declan. It's got Matthew. It has got Hennessy. We don't like Hennessy around here. And it's got that guy. I even forgot his name, but I also don't like him. And then I'm sure that one of them is not Hennessy and one of them is Jordan. And we love Jordan around here. Oh, this thing comes with more things than I thought. I thought I was just getting the book. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh. That's cute. You have a bookmark. I just, I really just didn't expect there to be things in it. It's kind of such thin wood that you can almost see through it. And it says light follows darkness. And then it also says it in, I'm assuming Latin because it's, because it's these books. Oh, I'm getting little, oh dear. Okay, I've got that everywhere. You know, the fluff that they pack these things with? It's everywhere, that is okay. Oh, we have it, we have the book. Oh my gosh, the book is here, the book is here. Oh, I don't have anything. Clearly I don't do unboxings on my channel because I've got nothing to open this plastic with. Come on, just <gasps> did it with the sheer force of my hands. That is how amazing I am. Yes, yes, yes. Oh gosh, so this is the shortest book in the series. It is so small, it is so small. Literally, it's the smallest book in the series. The second one was the biggest one because it was chunky and then the first one was medium sized. This is tiny. This is absolutely tiny. But yeah, that is what the cover looks like. This is the exclusive cover. I think the other one's orangey, but these ones are bluey. You know, blue is my least favorite color. Okay. It is signed by Maggie Stufata. There's a letter inside that's exclusive to our crate members. Oh, I'm gonna read this and I'm just going to fall to pieces. I don't even think it's gonna be very good. I don't think I'm gonna be satisfied with the conclusion in the series, but I do think I will still fall to pieces because it's the last time we get to experience time with characters like Ronan Lynch and Declan Lynch and Matthew Lynch and Jordan and Adam. And I don't wanna let any of those characters go. Wow, okay. Also, oh nice. Nice engraving on there. Nice silver spine. I was told that the ja dust jacket is reversible. So that's artwork done by Maggie Stiefvater on the inside. It's a hawk, which you know, the first book's called Call Down the Hawk. Well, I'm gonna read this at some point and perish, but I really didn't focus on putting you in the right position or anything. I just wanted to open this immediately, which I did, but I should also tell you about the book I read. Now there's just mess in my flat. Oh, so messy right now. I was just too excited. Ta-da! I finished reading News of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. And I just want to tell you right now that this book fits the prompt of gothic mood read. I left the mood reading till last because I'm in a high fantasy mood. Gothic mood read for the Gothic Mansion prompt, which means I'm done. I've read 10 books this month so far. I've completed my Gothic Mansion prompts and I am officially a Gothtober final girl because I survived the Gothic Mansion. So now I'm gonna start working on surviving the summer camp, which obviously I won't survive. I won't finish before the end of the month, but I will do my best to make some leeway with those prompts as well. But yes, Music Nightmares, I finished it and I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I think this series, this whole series, this and Strange the Dreamer, I just wanted a different story. I wanted the world, I wanted the characters, and I just wanted the story to be completely different. And this book takes the story in a direction that is so different from the first one and it's just introduced a whole new element and I was not behind that element. I was not here for it. it smells like my lasagna is done. Okay, I've got to speed this up. And I just was not here for the direction that it chose to go in, which is fine. Sometimes you disagree with the way a book pans out, but for what the book is in itself, it's not a bad book. I do think it goes a bit over the top. There are three ex machinas in this book, three times that you believe a character is dead, but they are not dead. 
that is a lot of times to use the same trope and it also does a trope that I think is kind of a scapegoat where it's like you've got a bad character but you know what everything's going to be fine within that conflict because I'm going to introduce an entirely new bad character that's even worse to kind of solve some of your other plot problems and I don't really like that and I don't really like how that was handled and it just felt a bit of like an easy cheap escape and I do like some of the messages that this book sent and Errol Fain as a character I really really liked him in the first one I loved Laszlo he was my favorite main character but in this one it's almost like Laszlo forgets his friends and it's also like some characters who were main characters in the first book are secondary characters in this one and they have this whole storyline and it's so much character change from where they were in the first book that you're like I wish we were there for a bit more of that development and that that storyline was a bit more impactful on the story but it was mostly just included as a side note footnote to kind of show where the character ended up so all in all I think there were some good things in this series and there were some not so great things in this series but ultimately personally it just wasn't one for me because I would have written this book very very differently and I'm not writing this book so I'm not going to give it a bad rating or anything because I can't rate it for the things that it did not do but for the things that it did do I think it did them okay not the best but okay and that is my thoughts those are my thoughts on Muse of Nightmares having just immediately finished the book oh my gosh Grey Warren is here okay I need to I need to get my lasagna out the oven I need to put on some more washing I probably I was gonna take a nap because I was feeling tired but now I have energy so I might <laughs> I might film something that is for another video which is sponsorship which is exciting but won't be in this vlog I'm afraid Okay, we just finished watching Ready or Not and we're about to hop onto the discussion live show, but I just have to say that was a very, very good film. I really liked it. It did have some of the stereotypical final girl tropes in there, but it also broke some of the boundaries and I really liked the way that it kind of changed some things. It was funny. It was a horror comedy that managed to balance the funny and the creepy elements very well it had very good suspense it used all of the imagery the person who acted the main character was great i was rooting from rooting for her from the start and all of the other family members had personalities and i really liked the personalities and roles that they played it ended very good i just was very very satisfied having finished that film and i can definitely seeing it be up there with my list of like favorite horror comedy films because it wasn't too gory but it also wasn't too tame definitely recommend ready or not i'm so happy to have another one to add to my favorites canon good morning it's the last day of this vlog monday the 24th and i finished another book so let's talk about it so the first book that the only book that i finished is beautiful broken things by sarah barnard and i love this I give it five stars and it's a new favorite for me i think it's again just i feel like in young adult i've really seen some of the best depictions of friendship and this depiction of friendship was absolutely amazing. I just loved how it showed how complex it can really be to be a best friend. And especially when your best friends as a twosome and then someone, a third person comes in. And there's always a certain way that often this dynamic goes, but it did not go that way. They actually do become a threesome of best friends, but it does offer in a whole load of complexities. It does change things because two of them have been friends since childhood. And then there's this new character and it's about the ways in which all three of them do and don't fit together but it also deals a lot with a certain subject matter, which is one of the main subject matters in this book. And I'm going to leave a content warning for it down below. There's more content warnings, but I'll be putting the rest of them in my wrap up. But meanwhile, I just want to highlight this one because it's largely about that. And it really, it's a difficult subject to write about and to talk about. And I do have to say, I personally think this book did it really well and did it really sensitively. And it doesn't focus on that character, that character is a secondary character. Well, she's a main character, but she's not the character's point of view you follow. And I think that is a very good way of doing it and showing how something like this can touch other people's lives as well. But it's also like, the author's note especially highlighted this. This is a story that's an after story. Something has happened to this character and she's escaped out of it, but now she's dealing with the aftermath. 
And that is a whole load of things to untangle, especially when it comes to being a good friend in those situations. And also what I really liked about this book is it showed that there's not just one way to be a good friend in those situations. You need different kind of friends who fulfill different kind of roles when you're dealing with something like that. And I just think this book just did it magnificently. It did it sensitively. It's done it better than any adult fiction I've seen on the same subject. So as a young adult book, it really just ticked my boxes. And alongside A Quiet Kind of Thunder, which is the first book by Sarah Barnard I read, I think I can just say that she is really one of the young adult contemporary authors who knows what she's doing. And I'm a fan and I'm happy because I've got another one of her books on my reading list on my TBR. So I'm looking forward to getting to that one all the more now. I also just wanted to give you a bit of an update because I have got till halfway through Tender is the Flesh. And I just feel like I'm spending so much time comparing this book to others, but now it's really giving me 1984 vibes, which is strange and bizarre, but it's like there's a society that's set up and it does not fit within its parallels. And it's just very, very emotional to, for me to read this. I think it's very interesting that I'm finding it quite emotional and heavy to read this because the writing in it is quite punctual. It's quite to the point. It's quite dun 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 like action driven rather than inserting lots of emotions into the writing itself and yet it's still giving me those emotions which I think just shows very good writing. This is also translated fiction by the way so whoever translated it did a very very good job. I'm very much enjoying it and hopefully I'll be finishing this in the next vlog because I'd like to finish that before the end. I forgot to mention that beautiful Broken Things ticks off my prompt for multiple survivors because multiple people did survive this book. And I also started One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. It is a young adult thriller murder mystery book and it's about these group of children who go into detention but only four of them come out because one of them is dead and they all have motive to kill this teenager. So it's who done it. And I think it's very popular. It's got nice frayed edges. I had been avoiding it. I don't think young adult thrillers are my kind of thing, but I was at a blogger event and I got a copy. So <laughs> I've also got it signed to me. So I really hope I do like it and I'm looking forward to seeing what I think of it. As for today, I just went and met up with my friend. We had a good time. We went to Waterstones Piccadilly. We just had a catch up, some drinks and just talking. And then it was just nice to go about Waterstones Piccadilly. They always have so many books to browse through. And of course, I didn't get anything because of my buying ban. But they also always have these pop-up things to do with certain books. So it's always fun to see what pop-ups are there. And then I had that tea in the evening, which is the tea that I was trying, the wild apple and cinnamon. And it was just as lovely as I remembered the review that I mentioned for it after I pulled it from my tea advent calendar still stands. And more excitingly, I'm trying to decide which tea advent calendar I'm gonna want this year. Cause actually we got through quite a few of those teas this month. And that is it, that is all for this vlog. Thank you so much for coming along with my journey. There's only one more to go because Goftober is coming to an end. But please let me know in the comment section down below what was the most disturbing book you've ever read or what and why? Or also what was the most disturbing thing you've ever watched or why? Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video and you know what they say. Onwards and upwards. Excelsior!